I've brought my, the rear hoop of my cage up to my friend Billy White's uh, garage, which he calls Speed Developments Ireland. That's right. And that's because I want to put in a, a bar to mount my harnesses on. And Billy is very good at working with roll cages and he has plenty of supplies of the, the correct type of steel. Is it actually tube or what? Well, they actually refer to it in a different way, don't no, they? No, it is tube. It's it is tube. tube, yeah. But it's no seam down the middle, I like guess. No seam, no. Um, the difference between tube and pipe is uh, you measure tube on the outside mm -hmm. and you measure pipe on the inside. Okay. That's the difference. <laughs> but this is a CDS tube, so there's no seam in it. It's, uh, it's actually, there's a certain spec that has to be uh, made to four roll cages. It's not specifically designed for roll cages, it's actually designed for hydraulic. Uh, pipe work and stuff but it's the same spec as what the FIA uh, use. And this is one of the few modifications you're allowed to do with the cage within historic regulations and it's largely to get away from fixing the, the harnesses to the floor and then coming up at a, a really strong angle. So we're going to be able to reduce the angle which makes it a, a lot, lot safer and also um, when you are fitting to the floor you're using the original anchor points of the the old back seat belts and they can often be offset a bit as well and there is a tolerance for that but it's still it's not it's not that nice a thing to think that they're yeah. they're about 20 degrees out one way or the other yeah, yeah. so these this will mean my harnesses run straight and through towards my back with uh, less of an angle down which means if you're unfortunate enough to have an impact you don't get pulled down in your seat as you go forward the, the ideal is that you just move and the, the load on the belts is um, spread evenly um, down the front of your body yeah. so let's get on with it yeah <laughs> the first thing Billy did is take a measurement of the distance between the two roll hoop stays these are the bars that go to the wheel arches on my car he measured out a length of his CDS tube he can supply the 38 millimeter tube for these older cages as well as the, the larger modern sizes. You cut the, the length with extra material still on it. Um, it doesn't actually have a machine that cuts the curves. Um, he'll do that by hand using a plasma cutter. He's done a lot of these, so he just marks it up by sight. Much the way I do my bodywork repairs. The plasma cut will still be a little bit rough, hence he can just draw this out by hand and he'll finesse it using abrasives on the grinder. The plasma cutter though will give you that concave cut that would otherwise be quite hard to achieve. I haven't actually seen a plasma cutter in use up close. It's incredible to see it going through steel like a hot knife through butter. You'll have to remove one of the plates in order to fit the, the bar in between these rear stays. Um, it will be that tight. These plates aren't in the best condition anyway, so I was going to replace them after I fitted it to the plates that I'll make to fit them on the car. That'll mean I get all my positioning right. Watching Billy work on the cage is inspiring me to, to do those bits and pieces myself. We need to remove the diagonal um, in order to get space for the welding on what will be the right hand side. We will have to make sure there's enough space for that bolt that holds the lower end of the diagonal there. He's just cleaning up all the contact surfaces so there will be nice clean welds with no contaminants. Starting to tidy up the edges of the plasma cut using a grinding disc and now he'll start trial fitting it. He's already got it quite close, but the, the bars have uh, splayed a tiny bit there, so he will ease that as he makes a neater edge.
A few final adjustments. And then we'll fit it. Making sure to get it level. Then he can tack it in. And tack it in four places to prevent it moving about when he starts doing his continuous wells. Using these ramps as an adjustable height work platform is very useful and gives him good access for comfortable welding which will lead to neatness in the end. We started with the underside, which is most likely to be unseen. But looking at those wells, he's hit the ground running. Now we can flip the cage over and continue the wells over the top side. We did check it before he started welding, but it's still a relief to see that bolt going in. And that's it. That's my harness bar welded into place. Looking forward to seeing it in the car. So Billy, this is a car you've been working on for a customer and there was already a cage in it, but it needed some updating. What did you do? Yeah, so this the cage was put in this car a long time ago, could be 10 years ago, and it was never actually finished as a competition car. So by the time it came around to now, where it needs to be log booked for, uh, for competition, these additional bars had come into the regs. So you now need a, a windscreen support bar. So I had to add this bar in and this one down here on both sides. And then we also added in this bar here, which uh, is going to carry all the steering columns and dashes and all that sort of stuff. Billy, this is uh, an RX-7, isn't it? It is. And um, so what have you been doing on the front end here? Well, this is going to be running a different engine than uh, it, the shell came with. They, these are rotary originally, and now it's going to run with a, a Honda engine, a Honda K20 engine. And uh, to fit the engine in, there's quite a lot of modification done to the subframes and done to the bulkhead to get the engine to fit in. The Honda engine's quite a tall engine, and it would fit in the engine bay, but it would be probably up in the bonnet. So we had to modify the, the whole subframe to sit, let the engine sit down into it. And then to keep rigidity in the subframe, we had to make up uh, another X frame that bolts up underneath to hold the whole thing together. And also you can see the bulkhead is modified quite a good bit as well. Um, it's more to do with the engine being so tall than uh, it actually moved further back. And then we had to put access panels in the bulkhead to access things like the starter and top gearbox bolts because uh, on race day and all that, you, you don't have four or five hours to get to your starter. You need access panels, you need to take them off within five minutes, get the starter out, back in again. So we're sort of thinking on that, how is the car going to be used while we're building it the whole time. Billy, what's going on with this one here? This car is a bit sick and it's my fault, <laughs> really. <laughs> this is my uh, Formula Renault racing car that I use for hill climbing. And as you can see by some of the suspension components, it's uh, a bit sick. So I had a bit of an off during the year and sort of tore this whole corner off. So it's hopefully next on the build, back out on the ramp and get fixed up. All the customer cars sort of get done first, but hopefully now before Christmas I'll have this back going again. We wish Billy all the best of luck with his repairs and look forward to seeing him on the road again soon.